Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this beautiful Devon beach scene from a while ago. I'll be showing you my sketch and showing you how I simplified the scene from a photograph on Pixabay. The link will be in the description below. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful um, Devon Beach seascape. Um, it's from a reference photograph that I found on Pixabay. The um, link to that will be in the description below. This is a sketch that I did to simplify the um, photograph for painting, excluding the people and the boat in the water. Um, and that will make it into more of a traditional style landscape. So this is my paper. It's um, Milford 100% cotton cold press paper. It's taped to my board and my board is an angle of about 45 degrees. I've lightly sketched in um, a very simplified version of the photograph with the two headlands on the left and right to the horizon line and the beach and the grassy sand dunes in the foreground. Uh, pause it here if you want to copy it. So now to paint it, I'm using my size 14 Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush to wet most of the sky um, with clean water. And um, I'm cutting across my horizon I don't mind if my sky wash goes into the headlands because they'll be darker for the most part. But I want to leave my sea unpainted for now. So this is just ordinary plain ultramarine blue. I'm making sure I've got enough mixed up um, to complete my sky. And starting in the middle and working in and around the wet areas of sky and the dry patches of dry paper, um, I am getting in one of these sort of um, wet in wet skies where you kind of scrub the mop brush around, moving the paint, diluting it here and there as the paint runs out on the brush. So it's richer, more intense blue towards the top of the sky and becomes paler as it um, comes further down and nearer to the horizon. I'm leaving quite a few bits at the moment of unpainted paper. I will fill some of those in and smooth some of those out. Um, I'll rinse out my brush so that it's almost dry. Tidy up the horizon and then using the almost dry brush you can see to move the paint around sort of lift it out so that I'm getting the impression of clouds. I've got a few white clouds that will soften back a bit more as it dries and where I'm moving the paint around lifting it slightly I'm getting these darker clouds sort of appearing and these will soften back considerably but I'll get the hint of shadows on the undersides of the clouds. This is my large um, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harkey brush. I'm using the tips of the brush and sweeping it side to side to put in my sandy beach um, below where my sea will be. Again, leaving a few bits here and there of unpainted paper and just roughly using this pale, quite diluted, watery mix of raw sienna um, to cover the, the whole beach area. And then the three quarter inch flat brush to feather through the raw sienna and just to use it clean and damp to take out the bead of water across the sky. Now apologies, I've missed out a bit of filming but I'm simply putting in the grass with ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow and raw sienna. Uh, flicking the brush upwards in sort of horizontal areas to pull up grass brush strokes across the grassy sand dune area. Um, I'm leaving plenty of gaps as well, which I can fill in a bit later. And then coming over to this sort of grassy headland on the left. And again, you can see I'm just using the tips of the flat brush and carefully bringing down enough of that green 
to cover this headland in a bit of grass, but then leaving it plain at the bottom where I will then be able to put in the sort of the rocks where the headland meets the beach. Now, this is a mixture that I've made up with Payne's Grey, Ultramarine Blue and some Burnt Sienna to make sort of blackish brown. And I'm filling in this headland using the tips, the corner and the belly of my Harky brush, trying to make sure I keep a nice sort of fairly straight flat edge where this shadowed headland meets the beach. And then with what's left on the brush, I can start building up the impression of sort of rocks and earth at the base of this headland on the left and introduce some darks across the tape into the grassy area. I keep making sure that I refer back to the photograph and checking that my tonal values are okay and that everything's looking um, in the right sort of proportions um, and tones and hues. So just maybe leaving a little bit of sparkle just for variation, dabbing in a bit more paint into that wet area while it's still wet with my three quarter inch flat brush because that allows me to get a sort of sharper edge across the bottom or the edges. And here where I'm putting in um, a few rocks on the right, again, the flat brush allows me to keep quite a nice sharp but low profile to these marks that suggest the rocks. And for the sake of continuity of my darks, um, just a little bit of this dark colour um, into the grassy area, um, mostly across the base, uh, keeping it in the same sort of direction as everything else, and then using the corner of my plastic card to scratch through so I get different textures in the grass. And I think I'm beginning to build up quite a nice effect there, but without drawing too much attention to it and then just scraping through a couple of those little rocks just lightly so there's a bit of light on the surface the top surface of the rocks and now i'm going to leave it to dry completely it's very important that it's totally dry because i'm now going to put in my c using my flat brush again and a mixture of ultramarine blue and a bit of raw sienna to just um give it a slightly greenish tint and to darken it up a little bit, being careful to follow my penciled horizon line. So I want to keep it very narrow and to break up the blue with unpainted narrow bands, horizontal bands, um, and that will give me the impression of surf and breaking waves keeping it really, really simple. This is what the tips of the flat brush are really good for. And then I can bring a little tiny bit of that color underneath the headland here and there. And if I then soften back those brush strokes, hopefully it will just give me just a hint of a little bit of sort of low tide water on the wet sand. And now I'm going to mix up that grass colour again, ultramarine blue, but this time with plenty of cad yellow. And I'm going to use that richer colour to brighten up the grasses in the foreground here and there across this patch of grass. Building up these extra layers just to add texture, but nice pops of darker, brighter colour over that fairly muted underlayer of grass that we painted in previously. And then back to the three quarter inch flat brush, this time with Payne's Grey, a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna. And I'm gonna start putting in the shadows under the rocks and around the rocks. So I'm building up my lovely dark tones that helps the rest of the mid-tones and light tones pop.
trying to balance things out as I go. And then um, a darker layer of rocks really in shadow at the base of this outcrop on the right. Again, trying to keep things nicely balanced. But still maintaining the look of um, a rocky headland. And then back to my green colour just intensifying slightly, not as much as the foreground, this headland here. Because this is um, in the midground, so it's not as bright. And then into that same dark mixture, this time with my small calligraphy brush, and I'm going to very loosely uh, paint in the trees on the top of this headland. Just really just scribbly marks. Just a hint of a couple of trees. And now just a few finishing touches with the flat brush, just putting in a little bit of something and nothing for sort of rocks and stones and bits of seaweed on the beach, getting smaller and fainter as I go further back into the painting. And making the paint a little bit weaker so I get a paler brown as um, colors get a little bit lighter as you get further back into the distance and then making sure I've got a few uh, darks in amongst those breaking waves just to bring them out forward a little bit more. And finally, I'm going to test out my small ProArt synthetic sword liner brush and see how it works for really small birds. I want birds in this painting, some beautiful gulls, but I don't want them to be large or prominent. I just want them to complement the painting. Just three of them, and I'm really pleased. A delicate touch with this sword liner brush has given me some nice small birds. So, that's finished, let's take the tape off, pulling it away from the painting so that if the tape was to tear, it will tear away from the painting and not into it. And I'm pleased with the way this has turned out. Um, it's nice and fresh, it's captured that sort of nice blustery, summery feel that I was looking to get. I think that if I painted it again, I'd add a little bit more texture and some slightly brighter colour to the grass on the headland or cliff on the um, left. Just bring it out a little tiny bit more, not, not too much to draw too much attention to it. But I'm very happy with the way the sea turned out this time. And here's a photograph of it taken in a better light that show the colours off um, much more nicely. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please um, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports this channel on Patreon. And if you'd like to support the channel, please click on either of the links below. Many thanks, and I'll see you again soon, and happy painting. Bye.